Welcome and bienvenidos to our new program called Next Generation, highlighting the many creative journeys of next generation leaders. In this series, I will bring you the stories of young leaders in science, literature, medicine, education, and business. Those who have chosen to reach further, travel farther, innovate, and take the risks often necessary to make a difference in their own lives, in those of their families, their communities, and someday in the world. My name is Julieta Garcia. For over 22 years, I had the great privilege of serving as president of the University of Texas at Brownsville. Through that work, I came to know the stories of many of our students that overcame great obstacles to attend college and through great sacrifice of their own and of their families, make it through. Getting to know their stories was always a great inspiration to me. So I thought I'd chase some of them down, interview them, and let you hear in their own words what they're up to now, what their challenges were, and what they hope to accomplish in the future. I promise you will be as inspired, amazed, and humbled by their accomplishments as I have been. Now let's get started. It is my great pleasure to welcome today Samantha Gomez Black, a student that started out at a math and science academy at UT Brownsville and today is in medical school, right in the middle of rotations and some pretty intensive work. And so we're going to wind the clock back. Hello, Samantha. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Nice to be talking to you. It's wonderful to hear your voice and to reconnect with you. So I'm going to go all the way back to the first time you had to make the decision to leave your high school, which was in Los Fresnos, to leave as a junior and come to the Math and Science Academy at the university. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that decision. Was it a pretty easy one or a tough one to make? Um, Well, I would say it was kind of both. Um, My older brother was already attending school at the Math and Science Academy, um, and so my parents really were pushing me to go and to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, I was just really connected to my friends and my program at Los Fresnos. Um, I was involved in band, and um, it was it was pretty tough for me at, at the time, but having my parents and my brother really pushing me made it a lot easier. Absolutely. And tell me about your band. What did you play? Uh, so I played the trumpet, and that used to be my life, and I thought I was going to be a band instructor, and I was just really involved with it at that time. And are there similarities between music and science? Um, I think so. Um, I always tell people that learning to play an instrument and having that dedication of sitting down and practicing every day um, really uh, is applicable to, like, studying every day for science or whatever subject it is you're studying. So the discipline that you learned learning how to play the trumpet uh, actually transfers nicely over into the sciences. How interesting is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. once you came to the Math and Science Academy, did you ever think, ah, I should not have done this bad decision? Um, yes, actually, probably the first couple of months. Mm-hmm. Uh, the adjustment was really rough, um, just, you know, letting go of a lot of those that high school mentality and joining college, essentially. It was, it was pretty tough. And that's a transition that normally a, a senior from high school makes going into their freshman year okay. uh, at a university. You were making it two years younger, so you were about 16 at the time? Yep, I think I was 15, just <laughs> about to turn 16, so even younger. Well, once you, though, made it over that, uh, well, usually if we, if we can keep you to October, through October, September and October, we've made it over the hump. And November uh, feels much more comfortable for students. So mm-hmm. then you were in the Math and Science Academy. And what was that like for you, being on a university campus? Uh, it was really intimidating at first. Um, being around students who were a lot older than me, um, who kind of seemed to have it a lot more put together, I would say, um, <laughs> when I was just uh, feeling like a high school student really on a college campus. It was it was rough, but um, it was also amazing because you're surrounded by all these college professors and, and people who are really pushing you to strive for higher education, and it was, it was really inspiring. 
So the Math and Science Academy that started out at UT Brownsville and now has expanded to UT RGV is really only the second one of its kind in the state of Texas. So it really is a, a extraordinary important model for an opportunity for students like yourself to get into science and medicine and, and see if that's something they want to do. So, so once you got out of the Math and Science Academy, uh, well, really, while you were there, you had some opportunities to do some summer work. Where did you go for your summer internship? Um, so the summer between my junior and senior year, I went to um, the Summer Medical and Dental Education Program uh, in Houston at the UT Health Science Center. And um, that program had us um, on campus at the medical school and at the dental school, and we were basically taking um, courses like organic chemistry and physics and and courses that we would need to take the MCAT to eventually get into medical school. And it kind of gave us exposure into what medical school would be like because we went down into like the anatomy labs and we were just involved in shadowing and and that really um, motivated me to want to go to medical school. So that really took you far ahead of everyone else who is then a junior uh, for summer programs because you were not prepping for your SAT test or your SAT or or, um, ACT test. You were talking already about getting into medical school and the tests involved there. Then the following year, you uh, you went to Galveston Medical School. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So I was in the, the med- early medical school acceptance program um, for UTMB Galveston. So as part of that program, we had an early acceptance in a medical school. And with that, we would go to the medical school every summer and do kind of, uh, kind of a similar thing where we would take courses um, like prereq courses for medical school and just get exposed to what medical school would be like. So really that's a tremendous amount of experience uh, on site at two different medical schools during summertime before you even finish what would normally be your high school graduation. So you do graduate from um, the um, Math and Science Academy. That gives you an associate degree. Uh, or 60 hours toward a baccalaureate degree. And in your case, it, uh, it propelled you now to two more years uh, here uh, in school. And then you had some decisions to make about getting into uh, research. Who, was you, who did you do research with first here on campus? Well, I did um, research with Dr. Garrido, Emilio Garrido. Mm-hmm. He, um, he researched uh, epilepsy. And uh, that was really close to my heart because growing up I had epilepsy. And so coming to UT Brownsville, I I found him early on. Um, Actually, when I was just a high school student, when I was in my senior year, was when I started doing research with him. And it was just an amazing experience learning about this disease that I had and then um, kind of using that as an experience to motivate me to go shadow neurologists and figure out more about this field of neurology that I, I love so much. So working with Dr. Garrido, as we've heard from many other students, was really uh, a door opener for you in many, many ways into research, but also into the field of ep- uh, epilepsy. So, so once that was done, then um, did you also get a chance to work at the uh, Diabetes and Obesity Institute? Yes. So when I graduated college, when I graduated at UT Brownsville, um, I got the opportunity to work with um, the South Texas Diabetes and Obesity Institute with Dr. Johnson, where we did diabetes research, and I did that for a year during my year off between undergrad and medical school. So uh, Matthew Johnson then is the research associate that you worked with there at the um, Diabetes and Obesity Institute and again opened doors for Mm -hmm. you by giving you those opportunities. Sometimes people think that when a professor gets a grant, the grant is just for themselves and their research. But in fact, Mm -hmm. professors get grants that include getting students in those labs. So that's why they're extraordinarily important for universities' uh, professors to gain. So uh, then you got to, you, you took a year off. I mean, that's, that was extraordinary. How did you get permission to do that, and why did you do that? Um, well, actually, I, I did that because um, as part of that early acceptance program that I was in, I had gotten into that program a year too early. 
um, <laughs> for that program because I was just kind of so far ahead with the Math and Science Academy mm -hmm. that I, in order to follow through with that program, I had to take an extra year off to let the others kind of catch up to me, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which which felt so weird. But I, I took that time to kind of grow and and get out there and work in the real world and get some more research experience and make some networking connections, which was so great. A very valuable year. It really wasn't a year off, was it? It was a year in labs and working. Yep. So then now you're ready uh, to, to get into medical school. So tell us about that journey of applying for medical school. Well, that was a crazy time in my life for sure. Um, I basically lived out of suitcases, and it was a lot of kind of making yourself feel confident when you didn't really know how competitive you were. So I just kind of shot my application out everywhere that I could, and I had no idea whether or not I would even get into any other medical school um, besides the early acceptance um, that I had to Galveston. So I was really just doing it to see um, what my other opportunities could be. And I'm, I'm so glad that I did that because I don't think that any student really knows how competitive they are until they get out there and put themselves out there, which, which I think always proves to be the right choice. So your applications are out and you start getting letters uh, inviting you to go to medical school. How, how did that begin to feel? I mean, I felt amazing. I was so surprised by all of the responses that I received. Um, I received such early responses from so many schools in Texas wanting to interview me early. And so by August, I was already out there interviewing and, and you know, um, just talking to doctors about what it would be like to go to a school there. And it just had felt like such a dream for so long. And getting out there and going to all these schools was just amazing. So how many medical schools finally said, please, Samantha Gomez, come to our school? Um, I think in the end, I, I probably ended up with over 10 acceptances. Um, you, you know that's extraordinary, right? <laughs> Most students are praying for one. Right. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was surprising and such a great surprise. So you now had to make a decision. So tell us about the process, because we hope other students have the same difficulty, and that is getting too many acceptances, going through the rigor of the programs that you were able to go through, uh, and being so well prepared and so motivated. So tell us how you fi went through the process of finally deciding which medical school to go to. Well, that was really tough. and. Um Having that decision is such a great, a great decision to make, but it's also really tough because all of these schools are so great um, and, you know, have these high standards. And, and um, I always wanted to attend UT Southwestern since I was um, probably a junior in high school. I heard about it um, from the chancellor at the time. Um, he went to UT Southwestern. And... So that was, that was a big dream of mine. And then when I was accepted to other schools outside of Texas, I was accepted into Harvard Medical School. And so that kind of threw me for a loop because I just absolutely wasn't <laughs> expecting it. It was, it was so crazy. Um, and, and going and interviewing out there and experiencing all that really got to me. And I really wasn't sure for a long time where I wanted to go. And at the end of, of the day, I just explored every possible opportunity and found where I really fit and the people that I think would really propel me and help me get to the place I wanted to be as a doctor and that ended up being UT Southwestern. So I remember that time and I remember we were all trying to keep up with Samantha's story. What is she going to do? Where is she now? Who? What school is she visiting? And I remember that hearing that you had gone back to Harvard twice why would you go back twice before making a decision? Well, I wanted to go back and really make sure mm -hmm. um, because I felt that I really fit at UT Southwestern. But I, knowing that that was an opportunity that would never come again, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that, that, you know, I was sure of where I was going to end up and where I would be happiest. And, and, you know, hearing everyone tell me so much about how how Harvard, you know, it's an amazing medical school. You just want to be sure that the decisions you make, you're going to, you know, you're going to be the one who's going to live with them every day, and you know that you're going to be the happiest. And, and visiting Harvard again, um, it's an amazing medical school, and I hope one day I can get trained there at some point in my life. But um, 
but it, I just felt a lot more at home at UT Southwestern, and, and I think it's, it's the right thing to pick what, what you know you'll, you'll be most successful at. And UT Southwestern, as you said earlier, was where Chancellor Francisco Cigaroa had gone to school. And he was a border, uh, 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 he grew up on the border as we have here. He was in Laredo and had gone to Yale, and then he ended up at UT Southwestern. And, uh, and of course, never looked back, has been an extraordinary pediatric transplant surgeon. So I remember you talking about if it's good enough for the chancellor, he didn't do so bad, it's, it'll be good enough for me. Do you recall going through that process? Yes, I do, and that's exactly <laughs> what my mindset was. So I'm happy that it's worked out. No kidding. He's so proud of you, too. He, he always asking yeah. about your progress, and so he'll enjoy <laughs> listening to this interview uh, with everyone else. So you finally decided to go to UT Southwestern. Now, there are lots of medical schools in Texas. Why UT Southwestern? Um, well, first, UT Southwestern has an amazing reputation, and I think it's, it's for a really good reason. The research that they do at Southwestern is amazing, and the medical care that they provide is just is so top-notch. And I just want it to be a part of a community that was just advancing in medicine and was so cutting edge and had the newest research and, and was making these great efforts towards, you know, curing diseases and really taking par- care of patients. and. I felt like that plus the, um, the atmosphere of UT Southwestern, being that it was so um, top-notch but also so friendly and so open to um, kind of dreamers like me and people who kind of never thought that they would end up in, a, in such an amazing institution. I just fit so well there. How lovely to hear that. I'm sure UT Southwestern folks are going to be thrilled to hear uh, mm-hmm. this feedback as well. So. So now you're in Dallas. How long have you been in Dallas in, me- in medical school? So I'm about to finish my second year, so just going on two years. And you have how many more years to go? Two more years. Two more years. Okay. So, uh, so tell me where you are now in your studies. Well, so I just took my step one um, licensing exam, so that was a big hurdle to get over. Um, so I finished all of my first year, second year classes, and we are now all my cohort, of, my whole class is getting on the rotation schedule, and I just finished a, an elective rotation on immunology. So um, I'm going to start my research block here soon, and I'm doing dermatology research, which is really exciting. In, uh, immunology research is so fascinating now, where, as I understand it, they're trying to turn on at will our immune system to help fight off diseases and was it something that you had already been interested in or is it part of the routine um, rotation? Uh, So the elective that I took was um, I chose to take it on my own mostly because I'm really interested in the immune system and also my family just has a history of of things like eczema and other kind of um, uh, immune related diseases mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I just felt like knowing more about that could really benefit me and my family. So have you um, decided, have you tilted toward any particular area in medicine yet? Well right now I really like dermatology hmm. and I also really like um, rheumatology so those oh. are kind of the two. Okay so tell us a little bit about both of those fields. So both of those fields, I think, um, can um, really deal with the immune system. So the part of dermatology that I enjoy most is um, talking about how this, how our body interacts with the outside world through our immune system. So um, like autoimmune skin conditions really interest me. Um, and along with that, when you think about rheumatology, you think about um, autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, and and all of those those things really interest me, and they affect so many people. So um, I just feel like that could be a really good focus for me. And where does epilepsy land in your interest these days? I know. It seems so, so <laughs> far away, right? <laughs> um, I mean, I still really enjoy neurology, and that was actually one of my favorite blocks um, as a first, second-year medical student. So that's something that I'm excited to do a rotation in coming up here soon um, and see where that takes me because I definitely want to see if that's still a possibility for me. 
Now, you had to make a decision, I think about a year ago, about whether or not to get married while you're in medical school. Now, right. I'm not going to tell you what I think about that, but, <laughs> but, but, but tell us uh, what, what went into making the decision to go ahead and get married while in medical school. Uh, well, planning a wedding in medical school is not <laughs> something to take lightly, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I was taking basically a whole extra course of wedding planning during med school, so that was, that was a little Part of your rotation, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, definitely. Um, but deciding to get married, I mean, coming into medical school and moving to Dallas, I didn't decide to come here because my now husband lives here, but... I mean, it was definitely a plus that we could have our lives here in Dallas and keep things stable for the, at least the four years that I'm in med school. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy I did it, and I think getting married kind of gives me a more well-rounded view of the world and, you know, just gives you a healthier perspective on, yes, my life has kind of been my career or building my career for the past um, years, but you also have to remember that all of the other big things in life don't have to be put on hold. I think you're absolutely right. Okay, so I'll confess to you that all my degrees are as a married lady, too. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I know that a, a tremendous amount of stability and strength can actually come from having the right partner uh, support you uh, through those many tough years when you're going on to school. So I um, I, I understand what you what you went through, and I'm I'm very glad it all worked out for you. Thank so you. now, uh, tell us a little bit about your mom and dad. What do they think? I mean, somebody gets invited to go to so many medical schools. Most parents would just be jumping for joy and and also perplexed that you know, de dónde salió esta niña? What? Where did she come from? Now, what, your mom is a teacher, isn't she? Yes, she's a science teacher yeah. at Los Fresnos Middle School. So, Did that impact you going into medicine, you think? Definitely. I mean, my mom's motto is that science rocks, and she runs around <laughs> the school saying that all day. <laughs> so she definitely, I mean, she propelled me in, towards science in general, and I think um, my, my mom and dad were both just so hardworking and always told us that we could do anything that we wanted to do, mm -hmm. and that really really struck a chord with me. So, so I'm sure that, that everybody in Los Fresnos knows about um, their daughter, the Gomez girl who's out in <laughs> medical school and, and the roots that she got going to Los Fresnos herself. And your dad, is he a scientist also or a teacher? No, so he's in the manufacturing field, something totally outside of, of science, but it's, it's really interesting. So it helps balance the brain a little bit to get somebody outside of that area. Definitely adds a little bit of sanity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if you could talk to students right now, if they were sitting right in front of you, or to parents of students that are thinking about, should I send my child to the Math and Science Academy at UTRGV? You know, is this the right thing to do? Because that's a very difficult decision to pull a, a child out of, like, really at the child, because you're at 14 at that point or maybe 60, 15, as you said, um, and yank them out of their high school and all of their curricular activities, extracurricular activities, and, uh, and put them into the Math and Science Academy at the university. What advice would you give parents? Um, I would tell parents to really push their children to um, kind of reach for their goals, whatever whatever that means to them. And I think for most students, that means, you know, going to, uh, to college and getting a degree. And I think that the Math and Science Academy just provides such a clear-cut way for these students to, you know, really take advantage of opportunities and to learn so much self-confidence. And, and I think that that's so invaluable is having this young student kind of mold into this confident individual who knows that they can tackle any challenge and that will continue with them for the rest of their lives. And so I think parents should push their children definitely to believe in themselves. And I think that the Math and Science Academy is the way to do that. Now, you also played a very key role during um, the time when 
UT Brownsville and UT Pan American were going to become UT Rio Grande Valley, and you were invited uh, to represent UT Brownsville students at that event with a governor. And I've got a video of you speaking that day. Do you remember? And, and what do you remember most about that moment? Yeah, I definitely remember. That was one of the prouder moments of my life. Um, it was so intimidating, but <laughs> I remember being so nervous. And when I was asked to to do this, I I was so honored and, and surprised again that Simone Leti Fernandez asked me to, to do mm-hmm. this. And she has just helped me in so many ways in my life, and I'm so grateful. Um, but I remember not being sure whether or not this was something that I could, could do. It's just such a grand thing to be a part of. And and that was really one of the bigger steps in my life that kind of gave me confidence and enough confidence to speak for the students because um, I feel I felt I was in a good place to speak on kind of what what it would mean to the students to have uh, this medical school brought and the merging of the two universities and it would just be an amazing thing and I just wanted to express that to everyone. And you did. You represented every student. <laughs> current and past and future so beautifully that day. I was very, very proud, and I think I grew taller uh, that day and beaming from ear to ear, uh, listening to you and watching you as, as you welcomed this new adventure that UTRGV was going to be on. So now you're speaking directly to students. So a student here, a student sit at our university or in high schools listen to this interview uh, what would you tell them? You know, if they're saying, well, I could never get in, in uh, invited to that many um, uh, medical schools. I am not as special as Samantha Gomez Black. What would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that they are that special and that to not be scared and to not let their fear of failing overtake them because the only people who succeed are the ones who put themselves out there. And there's really no breed of person that's going to succeed more often than another. It's just a matter of putting yourself out there, working hard, and as long as you have that, you're always going to um, make it where you want to make it. And um, just ultimately not being scared, I think, is the major, major factor. Well, Samantha, I'm so glad that we caught up with you and that you found some time out of your rotations to spend um, a few minutes with us this afternoon. Um, you, you, you give us hope and uh, inspire the next generation of students to become as, as successful as you have been. So we've, we've been watching you for a few years, and we're going to keep our eye out on you because you still have a ways to go. And so don't be surprised if we call you back in a, in a while and ask you now, Samantha, how are you doing? <laughs> So I'd next, be so happy. No, well, I'm I'm very proud of you, um, Mihalinda. Very, very proud of you. So, uh, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was it was great. Hasta pronto. So I am concluding now our Next Generation uh, interview with Samantha Gomez Black, who started out at Los Fresnos High School, came over to the Math and Science Academy at uh, UT Brownsville, now UT RGB, and it accepted by over eight, I think she said 10 medical schools, chose UT Southwestern and is in her second year and doing extraordinarily well. Thank you for tuning in to Next Generation a program highlighting the next generation of leaders in the Rio Grande Valley and beyond.